Pagkaroon ng mainit na konfrontasyon sa kongreso matapos magsabutan ni Kong Abante at Kong Rodante Marco Leta Nagsimula ang tensyon ng questioning ni Kong Abante Ang ilang panukala ni Kong Marco Leta na may kinalaman sa mga isyu ng transparency at accountability Ayon kay Abante, tila may mga impormasyon na hindi na ilatag ng buo sa publiko Dahilan upang magsimula ang matinding sagutan sa gitna ng pagdinig Hindi naman nagpatina si Kong Marco Leta at iginiit na walang katotohanan ng mga paratang ni Kong Abante. Sinabi niya na ang lahat ng kanyang mga hakbang ay ayon sa batas at sa interes ng sambayanan. Sa gitna ng kanilang paglalaban ng salita, naging personalan na ang usapan. Dahilan upang humantong sa pisikalan na iringan, kinakailangan na rin makayalam ang mga kasamahan nila sa kongreso upang mapigilan ang mga mas malalang insidente. Ngayon, hinihintay ng taong bayo ng susunod na hakbang ng dalawa ang kongresista. Sino nga ba ang nagsasabi ng totoo? Patuloy na minamatsyaga ang isyu habang inaasahang magsasagawa ng masusing investigasyon upang manaman kung sino nga ba ang may sala at kung alin ang totoong intensyon sa likod ng mga panukala. Well, ito nga ang balitang ating pagkakatutukan. Ngunit bagong lahat, siguro ito yung mong subscribe at hit ng notification bell para tuloy-tuloy ang pagtutok mo sa mga bago at nagbabagong balita dito sa Bangon Pinas. rebuking this committee. Why am I supposed to rebuke the committee? I am you not... have been saying things for a while. What? You have been rebuking this committee. You we were not, we're not blaming the vice president on this. I, I, I asked the question. Marcoleta, we I are the not question. blaming the right to the One minute, one one minute suspension is the here. Move to suspend. The Honorable Marcoleta. May I offer a counter manifestation, uh, Mr. Chair? Later po, uh, one minute na lang po siya and then Kasi I will recommend. Kasi makalimutan yung continuity ng yung flow ng discussion. I'd like to ask only, Mr. Chair, by way of manifestation, is there anybody who is questioning the power of the force of Congress? Is there anybody who is questioning the legislative function and oversight function of Congress? Is there? Because if there is none, then we are not supposed to uh, uh, overextend the discussion or any manifestation because nobody is questioning that. And I think nobody could question that, e even the privileged speech of the Honorable Valeriano. I think the proper question there, the proper title is not asserting the power of the purse. We should not assert it because that power is inherent in us. Asserting or not asserting that power is of no moment. Yun po ay birthright. Yun po is inherent right of Congress. And let me make a record. The office of the Vice President, to my mind, did not undermine, did not undermine the power of the force. When she personally came in the first hearing and presented herself, including the budget by way of a PowerPoint presentation. She made a presentation, Mr. Chair. And after that, she made a categorical statement that she, she said, I forego, Madam Chair, I forego my opportunity to defend the budget of the office of the President by way of question and answer. And instead, I leave it to the discretion of the House of Representatives on their decision to decide on the proposal as presented. This is a very respectful answer, Mr. Chair. I did not find any offensive remark in that particular statement. She gave the entire House of Representatives the entire discretion, the entire right to decide on the proposal she presented before us. 
Why would we blame her for saying that she disrespected Congress? No, sir. I think it was triggered by the fact that questions were asked in relation to the, in, to the confidential and intelligence funds. To my mind, Mr. Chair, these particular funds were subjected to a notice of disallowance. But the notice of disallowance by its nature, by its very nature, Mr. Chair, is contestable. It is appealable. It is yet to be explained. And initially, as explained by the representative of COA, the notice of disallowance suffered by way of supporting documents, by way of noncompliance with certain requisites. What if the vice president is able to provide all the supporting documents? What if finally she is able to come up with the requisites required in order for you to, com to, to consider that all these funds are eventually are allowable and they are not disallowed. And chances are she may be able to do that. Hindi po final judgment ang notice of disallowance. As a matter of fact, based on COA's own representation the other day, the Vice President received the notice of disallowance only on August 24, 2024. Which means, Mr. Chair, the Vice President has six months within which to reply and make an answer. That is correct, Madam Kowa. So six months is up to February 2025. We should give her all the allowance. We should all give her the time. Because six months is six months. So why are we rushing to make a judgment? As a matter of fact, as I have already initiated earlier, Mr. Chair, when you said that anything we can discuss in this committee provided it is of public interest, and you said that intelligence funds and confidential funds are public interest, but I said because of our own rules, we should make a prior and preliminary determination that is directly and principally connected to malfeasance, misfeasance, or nonfeasance. We have not made that determination. How can, how can we now begin questioning whether or not the intelligence funds covered by an initial notice of disallowance is already re directly and principally connected with nonfeasance or misfeasance or malfeasance? Madam Koa, how many agencies of government today are subjected to notice of disallowance? Do you have a number? How many and agencies Mr. today? Chair, With Mr. all due respect to the honor, uh, but that is a question I will leave, and I yes. will terminate my, but, my, but, my manifestation, Madam. Yes, but I will. Uh, I, believe, I would Mr. like to Chair, respond. This is still my time. Yes, but I would like to respond to your uh, manifestation, uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Parliamentary Let inquiry, me, Mr. Chair. Parliamentary inquiry. What is the parliamentary inquiry of uh, the I Honorable? I would like Bante. to ask the Honorable Marcoleta, is he rebuking this committee? What is the question, Mr. Chair? Are you rebuking this committee? Why am I supposed to rebuke the committee? I am you not. You have been saying things for a while. What? You have been rebuking this committee. You we are saying not, that? We are not blaming the Vice President on this. I, I, I asked the question. Marcoleta, I we asked are the not question. blaming the right to the One minute, One minute. One minute. suspension is the Chair. Move to suspend. Move to suspend. Mr. Chair. Uh, with the indulgence of uh, Congressman Dionisio, the Chair would like to recognize the Vice Chairman Abante. Uh, Mr. Chair, a while ago, uh, COA has answered the uh, question of Congressman Romy Akov as far as the difference between an intelligence fund and confidential fund. Can you please repeat that? Meron pa kakaibang intelligence fund sa ang confidential fund? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, ang Intel Fund po, it is given to uniformed and military personnel and intelligence practitioners. And the purpose is for uh, 
activities that have direct impact to national security. For confidential funds, they are given to civilian government agencies that are intended to support the mandate or operations of the agency. Okay, Mr. Chair, therefore, therefore, ang intelligence fund, hindi confidential fund. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Okay, Chair. Okay, pero kanina, yung pong question ni Congressman Marcoleta, eh, sinasabi niya palagi, confidential fund or intelligence fund. Uh, Am I right? They are separate po. Oh, therefore, hindi po masyado naintindihan ni Congressman Marcoleta yung katanungan niya. Sapagkat kanya pinareho, ang confidence fund at ang intelligence fund. Na gusto kong itanong, Mr. Chair, no? Sinabi niya kanina, sinabi mo na mayroong confidential fund ang mga mayors and governors, di ba? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, intelligence fund, mayroon pa silang uh, intelligence fund? Um, generally, wala po since hindi naman po sila uniform personnel. Okay, uh, malinaw, Mr. Chair, na walang intelligence fund ang mga gobernador at mga mayor. Pero mayroong confidential fund. Yun po ba? Tama ba ako? Uh, tama po, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yung mga vice mayor at vice governor, mayroon ba intelligence fund o confidential fund? Mayroon ba silang confidential fund ang vice mayor at co vice governor? Um, actually, sir, uh, it's per, per agency po. So, if, for example, ma-designate na SDO ang vice, pwede po siyang mabigyan. Ano yun? Ano yun? Per, if per he is designated po. as he mayor, is correct. As SDO po. As oh, SDO. It depend, uh, if the vice mayor is designated as mayor, magkakaroon siya, correct? As mayor po. As SDO po. Ano SDO? A special Dispersing uh, Officer. A Special Dispersing special Officer. Yes. Ay kung hindi, wala siyang confidential fund. Yes. O oh, therefore, therefore, regularly, Walang confidential fund ang vice mayor at ang vice governor. Uh, yes. Ayan. Katulad din po yan ng Pangulo. Ang Pangulo dapat magkaroon ng confidential fund. Tama ho ba ako? Um, kung base sa gaapot, Opo. tama po. Pero ang vice president, hindi kinakailangan magkaroon ng confidential fund. Am I right? Not in... Am I right? Not necessarily. Correct. Following my question on the line of... Uh, Questioning that I have with the vice governor and the vice mayor. Sa NGAs po kasi, uh, sir, express, what is expressly provided oh, oh. in the GAA? In the GAA po. Then normally, normally, katulad ng, uh, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just following the question that I asked, di ba? Sabi mo kanina, yung vice governor at yung vice mayor, normally, wala yung confidential fund. Correct. Oh. Uh, yes, Madam. Mr. Unless Chair. otherwise, they've been designated as what? As ah? SDO, Mr. SDO. Chair. SDO, okay. Ganun din naman ang Pangulo at ang Vice President. Correct? Oh. Kung yung Vice President designated din na ganyan, mayroon siyang confidential fund. Am I right? Uh, Mr. Chair, what we only know is what, whoever is given um, confidential funds in the GAA, can um, use oh, Siguro ang DBM pwede makasagot niyan. Uh, Yusek, pwede mo ba sagutin to? I wish to manifest that the refusal of Her Excellency Vice President Sara Duterte to take her oath in today's hearing in the conduct of inquiry in aid of legislation is an affirmation of her stand, her position, during the budget briefing of the OVP. And this representation wishes to manifest that when the resource speaker does not take her oath, then it follows that whatever statement she will provide, we call it, it could not hold any water. That being not under oath, the same cannot be used as an evidence in any inquiry, in any proceeding, Mr. Chair. In other words, her refusal to answer in the last budget briefing of the OVP is tantamount to her stand in today's inquiry 
of refusing to take her oath. That is for manifestation, Mr. Chair. And with that, Mr. Chair, I wish to remind the committee, our esteemed colleagues, and the Filipino people of the constitutional mandate that public office is a public trust. When there is a question, we're bound to answer. We're bound to explain, as a matter of fact, no less than the Philippine Constitution provides. We are accountable to the Filipino people at all times. We are now confronted by the issue on confidential fund. And I wish to emphasize, ang confidential fund po ay pera ng taong bayan. And we owe it to the people to explain kung paano ito ginastos, saan ito napunta, and to be specific, sinunod po ba natin ang joint circular regulating the use of confidential fund. Mr. Chair, I wish to raise as well, to invoke as well, and remind our esteemed colleagues that pursuant to the separation of power, we, the Congress, is exercising the power to legislate. Under this power, we also have the power of the purse. We can amend, we can revise, we can approve, and we can disapprove the budget that was proposed to us by the executive. And I wish to remind as well that the best instrument which shows the power of the purse of the people is no less than the General Appropriations Bill, which is an embodiment of the allocation for the entire Philippine government, which is the result of the legislative process of the Congress. In other words, ang budget po ng ating bansa ay napapaloob din sa isang batas saklaw ng kapangyarihan ng Kongreso, and that is the power to legislate. To be able to make sure that the power of the purse is properly exercised, we are granted as well by the oversight power, and that is to make sure that all our legislations, that includes the budget of the national government, the General Appropriations Act, are well complied with by our fellow public servants. And to make sure, and as a consequence of this oversight power, we have this inquiry in aid of legislation. So I just wish to remind the Filipino people, and that includes the OVP, ito po ay trabaho ng Kongreso. Busisiin ang budget. And not only that, to exercise the oversight power to make sure na yun pong ating mga nakaraang legislation that includes the General Appropriations Act ay nagamit ng tama ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno. I hope that the OVP will be enlightened to address the issues instead of attacking this institution of politicizing and matters concerning politics, Mr. Chair. Third, Mr. Chair, we should be uniform in the application of our rules. If we are guided by the constitutional mandate that public office is a public trust, if we observe malfeasance, misfeasance, and nonfeasance in the LGUs, as a matter of fact, we have pending inquiry in aid of legislation Concerning LGUs, kung iniimbestigahan po natin ang Office of the Mayor, kung iniimbigastahan po natin ang Office of the Governor, by equality under the law, we should conduct an investigation as well to the Office of the Vice President. And I wish to thank the Honorable Valeriano 
Sa mga pangyayari ng iyong araw, ang pag-uulat nito ay nagtatapos na. Naway nagbigay ito ng karagdagang kaalaman at pag-udnawa sa mga pangyayari sa ating lipunan. Patuloy tayong maging bahagi at mapanuri sa mga susunod ng kaganapan. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagkikinig at pagtangkilik sa aming balita. Hanggang sa susunod na pagkakataon, ito ang Bangon Pinas, nagbabalita para sa inyo.